Hello. Hi, come on. Okay, so it's no secret that um, college students drink, and they drink a lot. So if you look at the graph behind me, uh, alcohol consumption among the college students over the last decade has remained uh, pretty much unchanged. So what does this mean? This means that the, that the <clears throat> I'm sorry. This means that we have not been able to, uh, to make college students drink less or stop them from drinking. Countless formal policies and programs have been implemented by universities and lawmakers in an attempt to lower the drinking rates among college students, but they've been ineffective. So examples of these formal policies that have been ineffective are like the idea of alcohol-free housing. Okay, yes, research told us that the alcohol consumption stops at these uh, settings, but the actual uh, rate of consumption does not stop because the settings of drinking just changes. So instead of drinking, not drinking at these houses and not drinking at all, these students are just going to their friend's house, the park, wherever it is to keep drinking. Another formal policy that I really don't have to explain much to you guys is the national drinking age of being uh, 21. I should have to tell you, people, college students in general, don't wait until 21 to start drinking. So what, is, so what does this mean? This means that if we can't stop college students from drinking, we must turn our focus to trying to keep them safe as possible while they're drinking. So this leads me to informal alcohol risk reduction strategies. So these are the rules created by a group and enforced by the members of the group to keep each other safe during times of drinking. And this leads me to the research I've been doing with Dr. Myers of the Health Studies Department. So I've been doing a qualitative data analysis of transcribed interviews, uh, eight focus groups, four sororities, and four uh, fraternities. And um, disclaimer, we chose uh, Greek life because you know, they're notorious for drinking the most. So if we want this type of information, this is where you know, who we should go to. So each, uh, each Greek chapter sent a representative, and they're asked questions uh, pertaining to their alcohol risk reduction strategies. Or pretty much, what do they do during their parties, during times of drinking, internally, to keep each other safe during times, during those times? So I'd first like to say the most common strategies I picked up on during, while well, I was coding all this data the past four months. And a lot of you guys will see these uh, as familiar to you. So the first one, uh, have a designated driver or someone to call an Uber or a taxi or a Lyft. And this avoids you know, drunk driving and makes sure people get home safe at the end of the night. It avoids consequences. The next common strategy I picked up on is the idea of, you know, make sure you eat before you go out, uh, and make sure you have water periodically through the uh, time of drinking, especially towards the end of the night, to avoid, you know, alcohol poisoning, and this, this helps refrain from getting drunk too quickly. Uh, the, uh, the third one, babysitting. Now, I can tell you this looks very different between men and women. Women tend to be a little more invasive, while the men, you know, the boys in the fraternities will just set up a trash can by one of their friends and check up on them in the morning while women in this study at least uh, had someone designated to stay the entire night with these people that needed to be babysat. Uh, the fourth one, often co you know, coming a little too late usually, is the cutoff, and that's when uh, you, know, you kick somebody out of your party or you confiscate their alcohol because they've reached that point. So with these most uh, common strategies, I also found less common strategies, and, these, and I thought these were, would work just as helpful or be just as helpful for uh, people. So the first one, a lot of these fraternities and sororities had people that were EMT trained, and they said that these skills would help uh, better evaluate their friends when they were drunk. So for example, like breathing patterns and blood pressure can be warning signs of when someone has drank too much or they have alcohol poisoning. And it is really hard for an unexperienced individual to know where this line is, whether or not someone needs to be hospitalized or they're just drunk. So I understand it's unrealistic to have all your friends or uh, at least one of your brothers or sister teammates to be EMT trained, but it's not unrealistic to imagine um, health education materials telling you about the physical warning signs of when your friend's too drunk and when they need hospitalization. And uh, schools can offer CPR training or alcohol poisoning training. And I firmly believe this could have saved the Penn State fraternity member that passed away recently. If any of his brothers knew about the physical warning signs of his situation, they could have got help sooner. Uh, the next one is the idea of having somebody watch you make your drinks or uh, have someone make your drinks for them. So a lot of these fraternities or sororities had in-house bartenders, or even if they didn't uh, outsource them, their own brothers or sisters would be the bartender. And this way, people don't spike their own drinks, you know, making it stronger than it needs to be, getting drunk too quickly. And so these are the only people allowed to distribute alcohol during the party times. And the last one, uh, game modification. So, you know, drinking games are probably the most fun part about drinking, and, but usually the reason people end up getting drunk really fast. So they, uh, they increase the uh, rate of consumption. So a lot of these fraternities especially, 
instead of playing beer pong or flip, pup, flip cup with beer or liquor, they uh, switched it out for water. So they're still drinking during this, during this party setting, but they're not drinking more during the games. And this can really save you from a lot of consequences. Uh, so in conclusion, drinking rates among college students have not decreased, and they're not probably going to decrease uh, anytime soon. So these uh, informal risk reduction techniques need to be formally uh, documented and shared with other people because they could possibly save lives. And this is just a small sample of four uh, sororities and four fraternities in the northeastern region. So imagine how many different risk reduction strategies there are nationwide and how many lives they could really save. Thank you. Thank you, Adam.